you need to get on speaker view if they're not already it's in the top right hand corner and they'll just need to click if it says gallery view click that and it will bring you to speaker view just so that you can see everybody's face when they're speaking oh i see thank you yeah yes so welcome welcome to um our discussion on talking about commissions this is a i think a big topic for a lot of of artists and wannabes um it's it's a way to sort of put yourself out there to the world and say um i'm willing to try to paint for you and i think to take that step can sometimes be a little bit difficult and there are a lot of questions and maybe issues to think about um and so i have invited some very special guests here to join me i'm rebecca z rebecca Zedibble. um you can uh, no, find me on Instagram and Facebook as Rebecca Z Artist because it's much easier than spelling my last name. And um, I've asked Pam Wenger, a very talented portrait artist. If you do not know her and you like portraiture, you should be following her. She is um, very gifted. We met back at um, Spring Maid um, back in the day when we could all gather as an art colony and um, study with so many wonderful instructors here in Myrtle Beach. And Pam and I have just sort of stayed acquainted through social media. So Pam, can you introduce yourself to everyone and give them a little background and tell us maybe where they can find you? Sure. Um, I'm a kind of a newcomer. As many people do, I found watercolor after I retired from my uh, paying paid well what was once a paid career i was a teacher for 35 years i taught gifted students and i uh, also was a technology coordinator so i do like gadgets um, when i retired in 2013 i decided to take up some kind of painting and i always loved to draw uh, portraits and um, decided on watercolor rather than oils i figured it'd be less messy and cheaper I'm not sure about the cheaper part, but I think it definitely is, is less messy. And I've fallen in love with it. Um, I rem Rebecca, you know, was, uh, I guess you live in Myrtle Beach, right? And that's where the Spring Maid was. I went to my first workshop, which was a Ted Nuttall workshop. If you haven't had a chance to take a Ted workshop, you really should. Um, and he's, he's just very motivating and makes you think about why you're doing this. Um, and uh, that's where I got pretty much my transparent palette from. And uh, then I took a Charles Reed workshop right after that. Um, rest, you know, may he rest in peace. And uh, that, that really inspired me as well. Um, so I've been painting ever since. I just can't stop painting portraits. And I've, uh, I, I don't know if any of you read the book, The Accidental Tourist. I feel sometimes like the accidental artist, an accidental workshop presenter and ac accidental commission uh, maker. Um, I have, it, it all has just kind of happened uh, without much effort on my part. And um, so as that, that relates to commissions too, I, since I'm kind of a newcomer in the field, I, I'm getting into probably some of the questions, but I, what I can address is that transition from I'm doing this as a hobby to I need to be paid for this. Um, and I think that is one of the most difficult things um, to go from your friends expecting you to paint their loved ones for free to now saying, no, I'm doing this as a business um, and I need to be paid. So I'll stop talking right now. That gives you a little overview of me and then we can talk later. Yeah, well, I think, I think that happens to a lot of us. I think many of my students, and, and I'm right with you that, you know, art was a late in life thing, and I had no intention of doing it professionally. I was very selfish and closeted about my art for many years because I, I really didn't want anybody judging or asking anything of me. Um, and so I, I totally relate to what you're saying, and um, and yet here we are, right? And I think that happens to a lot of people when they take up painting is that they sort of stumble in and without a lot of forethought. And that's why I think these talks could be very helpful um, because, you know, there are a lot of things that you want to talk about with people who are a little bit further down the road, right? And so hopefully um, 
hopefully our experiences and then those of Janet and Steve who have been at this even longer than you and I. And Janet and Steve, I'd like to take this opportunity to, to let you guys introduce yourself to the audience here. We're way down the road. In fact, we're maybe even over the hill. <laughs> yeah, I think we've been there a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I neither one of us had any formal training, but uh, a few workshops. We uh, met. We actually we met, met in a, in a, a Robert E. <laughs> so, Wood workshop. God, what? Thirty-five. Thirty-five years, years, ago. years ago. So that was it for us. But uh, anyway, uh, when I moved to Florida. With Steve, we did a lot of outdoor shows, and I, uh, I was asked a lot to do commissions. So that's what I focused on. Um, I love the human face. I love drawing. Always loved drawing, and uh, never thought anything about it. But it was something that I had to pursue. You know, you, sometimes you just can't help it. And uh, I did a lot of commissions to survive because of the shows that. It was always like I knew I could survive no matter what. <laughs> Might have had a premonition, <laughs> but um, it, no matter what, I could survive if I just knew how to do a portrait. Well, it was kind of it just happened. But anyway, everybody asked me to do portraits, and that was how I started. So I started first time out. I did sixty portraits in a mall for two dollars a piece in Connie Crowns. But that was my first. <laughs> that was a little before Steve, that was just right before him. Anyway, uh, so I did pastels, but then watercolor, when um, after being in Florida, we had to do watercolor. So watercolor portraits are challenging mm. and um, very, very uh, unique. Anyway, at that time, there weren't too many watercolor portraits painters doing portraits so if you but as I got into teaching which is my I don't know whether I love teaching more or painting more I don't know I think I you know I loved teaching anyway I had a big circuit uh, but I would like to um, you know when I got into teaching not everybody is going to do commissions but painting the human face is um, a gift and it's a, it's a wonderful experience. And my job, I loved working with others to try to get them to discover uh, the joy in painting a person, whether it be family or just interpreting uh, from photos or, or, or from life, whatever. So that was my, pretty much my story. I still, now I'll probably go after commissions if we're shut down. I don't know. I'd like to do the Zoom thing or maybe whatever we can do. Um, scheduled for Rebecca's in November, but I don't know what's, what's going to happen. Um, Steve, do you want to say anything? Well, commission work is yeah, actually, uh, you know, I'm probably not the commission king here, uh, although I have painted three or four nice paintings of Janet, uh, which oh. one of them has been in American Watercolor Society. Uh, I think my first success really with the uh, national stuff like AWS was with the uh, figure uh, portrait or portrait, more figure, well, sort of halfway portrait between. Figure. Yeah, portrait figure. I still do a lot of drawing of uh, faces because I think that's a good, uh, a good measure for how good your drawing skills are. I mean, a kid can look at a, a drawing and see if the eyes are goofy or if they're too big or too far apart or all the features are in the right place. So I, I still do a lot of that. Uh, I've done only one, uh, I've done commissions other than that. I've done a boat and uh, house commissions a little bit way back in the, in the day. I've done one, uh, <laughs> one, one, portrait commission and I went to do uh, for I think the superintendent of schools their daughter and this was back uh, I showed up with you know all my camera equipment I had the big lights and everything and the girl had uh, like pretty girl but she had like a spiked hairdo I don't know if you 
you know, like with spikes coming, you know, her hair and spikes. And so that was that was the first and only one I ever did. That was, a, that was a real challenge. <laughs> okay. You were traumatized. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think he was really in love to commission work. I don't think that's it. You have to have a certain sense with commissions. I think it's a certain mindset. You've got to please them, but please yourself. This is difficult. I, I, I totally I, agree, Janet. I, I wanted to say that I find commission work to be the most challenging thing that I do right now in my art adventure. Psyched up for it. I think it's a totally different feel. And I, I admit, I don't seek out commissions. I don't advertise them. I have a little statement on my website, but most people find me through social media or through the website and connect and say, do you do commissions? Yeah. And then, I, so I've learned a strategy for handling it because it caused more anxiety before I had yeah. my strategy. Yeah. Um, and now uh, it, it's, Sometimes the best thing you do because the reaction and no, that you get from the patron and um, also knowing that you've created something that's so personal and it's going to be so meaningful to someone that that's that's, that's wonderful. your reward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know I the rest of it's all for me, you know, um, and just for fun, but I Commissions, I, the worst of it for me is the fact that you're often not working from your own photographs. Exactly. And that is just, I mean, some of the horrendous things, Janet, I'm sure over the years you've gotten them too. The things oh. that people think would make a wonderful painting oh, yeah. down there. I'm thinking, or how, about, is, how about the size of the head? Oh my gosh. A yes. Quarter or a dime, even sometimes. Or a exactly. nice big smiley face. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the teeth. <laughs> yeah, the teeth. And, and the ones that are all washed out have no shadow shapes at all. Um, you know, I'll tell you what, though, this advent of the Zoom technology and everybody getting comfortable with it has changed the way I'm doing commissions for the better, because now I've been able to have consultations with people and show the, uh, share my screen and say, here's some examples of what I consider good lighting yeah. or a good pose. And I can even, I've done some teenagers recently and I had them even take a look at some of their poses and, you know, how that would relate to uh, the painting. So actually right now is kind of a good, a good thing. Can you take a out. screenshot of them at so that time? I'm or? not going to actually use the screenshot, but I'm talking to them, at least trying to educate them about what's going to make a good reference photo. And then I have them or whoever's taking the photo of them, it's often a parent. Um, I have them sit in on the Zoom meeting sometimes as well, but it just gives us all more of a sense of what will make a good painting. Wow, that's very professional. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gone that far. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think the bottom line is that uh, at some point early on, you need to establish that you have sort of ultimate control of things. Uh. Because if, if, <laughs> if it gets out of hand, if they think that they can arrange things, and, and uh, I think it all goes downhill from there. It's like Sargent would, you know, send people back to dress in different outfits. Uh, you know, oh, they need to wear white. You know, it, when they come down in a dress that's not appropriate. Uh, and I think maybe even, uh, you know, not that this would be something that would be useful for everybody. But if you have a, you know, a gallery or somebody that takes the commission for you, so you're not, so you're the artist and you're not having to, you know, be the bad guy and say, gee, here's what you need to do and here's how you need to do it. Uh, you know, that might be useful, but it, certainly that's not the way Janet no, I never works. That. That's and, not the way I work either. No. No. <laughs> In fact, I was going to get into that portrait commission business with the big portrait America or whatever. Yeah. And I said, no, I, it's just not me. I can't go through an intermediary and you know, all that stuff. I, don't. I think it would suck all the fun out of it. Yeah. Um, it's not personal anymore. No, it, it needs to be personal. And even when it's someone across the country or around the world, I need to have some kind of a connection with the person, at least who's commission, who's asking for the commission. Um, what, you know, some, just them. <laughs> yeah. Right. Some of, one of the challenges I find, and, and I'm learning to speak up now, and I, I am way more demanding from the people who are commissioning, 
um, when people want changes made. Um, and people don't realize that you can't just make the eyes wider and have the whole face not change. You know, yeah. I remember handing a commission to a woman last Christmas yes. and she didn't, she said, oh, this was regarding her granddaughter. Oh, I don't like the way she squints when she smiles. Well, I showed her about five pictures and her granddaughter does squint when she smiles. She said, well, can't you just make her eyes wider anyway? I said, no. I cannot. Yeah. And so you know, she ended up doing a portrait of a horse and her daughter was, the granddaughter was like that big because she didn't want squinty eyes and I wasn't willing to change them. Yeah. Well, let's, let's back up just a little bit. Um, let's talk about um, ways that you have found successful to getting commissions. Like what would be um, a prerequisite or um, a method that you would suggest to people given your experience about um, maybe how to get a commission and what to say to people if they want to commission you? Well, well I, I don't remember. I guess if, you know, you could nowadays, they have social media, so you could post um, a an example of your work on uh, Facebook or something or Instagram or whatever it is uh, post a sample and say you know I guess something like that I, I haven't gone after them very much I've been it through shows art shows that's where I got most of my commission work or from workshops. word of mouth yeah, workshops. Yeah. workshops or whatever yeah. Um, yeah. word of mouth and just doing you know, and, and I, right. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say, Pam, I, I know that for me, um, I have on my Instagram feed or, um, you know, in my brochures, I have, you know, commissions, um, I'm open to commissions. And so that's pretty much, and then it's word of mouth, um, you know, people seeing what I do and wanting something similar for themselves. Um, do you, so you haven't really advertised, Pam, I know you. I, you I have a statement on my website, but um, the, the bulk of the commissions I do come through uh, social media and just people questioning me. And they used to cause me a lot of anxiety until I did come up with a plan of attack. And what I did in, in my notes on the computer, I have a statement about doing commissions. I have a price list. Uh, for various sizes, and I don't advertise my price list. You have to ask for it. Yeah. Um, I don't want it out there on my website because I want leeway. Um, so when someone texts me on Instagram or on Facebook and says, you know, said, do you do commissions? I say, yes, I do. If you're interested in finding out more, email me, and I give them my email address, and I say, I'll give you more information. That way they, I make them take that one extra step to show that they're really interested. Yeah. And then when they do email me, if they do, um, then I, I just copy and paste this blurb that I have. And I say, if you, at the end of the blurb, it says, from, if you're still interested, connect with me on, on my, via email and we'll, we'll make this happen. Um, That's what so, I have to, yeah. I, have a, I have a note that is a document and yep. I talk about what's involved, um, I talk about what the ideal photo would look like. I talk about, um, you know, uh, pricing and I, I do, I, I'm going to add to it based on my most recent commission. I'm going to add to it that if there's more than one figure in that commission, mm -hmm. the price goes up and I'm going to give myself leeway. I'm not going to define that. I'm going to give myself leeway because I mean, you learn these things the hard way, right? But um, I charge by the square inch and it's a higher price than my regular paintings because, you know, conceivably I'm painting someone else's image, not necessarily, you know, a heartfelt project of my own. And um, I try to find something to love mm -hmm. about everything I do. <laughs> yes. Because I feel as if, I feel as if, if I can't, look at my subject with love, um, something's going to get lost in the process. I have had some crazy requests though. Like I have had, I had this one woman, I wrote a blog about it. I had this one woman who lost her dear pet. I do pet commissions and um, she lost her dear pet. And um, I said, well, you know, I'd be more than happy to think about 
painting it for you, why don't you send me some reference photos? That's where we always start. And I never say yes until I know that I have a good photo. And I've learned that the hard way too, because I said yes to a friend of mine whose pet was dead. (laughs) And I don't mean to laugh, it's not funny, but her pet was dead and it was, it, and it, the only photos she ended up having of this poor dog was, it was a black lab in shadow from a distance. And I was supposed to construct the, you know, the facial features and oh my gosh, what a, what an ordeal. I had already said yes and um, was kind of committed at that point and I was googling black labs and trying to find one that looked close and oh my gosh you know just the the stress so I've learned never say yes until you see the reference and you've agreed that yes this would make a good a good painting I also had somebody um who's who's dead um what is it called a sugar glider um, she wanted me to um, paint her dead sugar glider and she sent me these photos and you guys have all seen them. The tail's in focus and the face is out of focus or the face is like super close and the rest of the body is, uh, it, it was just, oh, it was crazy. The things that people will come to you with, with commissions can be a little nuts and you have to be prepared. I think Pam, that's what you're talking about is have your prices in line um have have a, a system that you feel totally c- comfortable presenting to people that this is my fees and if we're going to do this i'm more than happy to do it but um don't apologize or be having to come up with your prices on the fly because that just doesn't look professional um, you know i i first of all i want to say rebecca do you have a disclaimer on your site saying i do weird portraits you must um uh, I think that for me, the transition, as I mentioned before, from hobbyist, you know, Pam does some painting, uh, to Pam is a business now, um, was a tricky one. And having, having these steps in, in line and like these documents that you send to people and a plan of action has helped take the anxiety off of what sometimes was my most uh, anxious type of, of painting. Um, and I have gotten over the years now, uh, more stringent in my requirements to people. And I definitely say that the photo must be high resolution. And I've even taken the photo, blown it up, and shown them what a tiny piece of it would look like to me when I'm trying to paint it to prove to them. Because they're seeing it through their mind, the eye of their memory or their knowledge of the person, and they're not seeing it objectively. as was the grandma who didn't realize her granddaughter squints when she smiles. Uh, yeah. Um, and I've also, one of, one of the other tricks um, I always do now is to, add, even the, if it's a great photo, I ask what the eye color is because- yeah. And hair oh, color. Yeah, yeah. And hair color, yes, photos lie. And I've made mistakes. And, um, I've gotten so serious about it. <laughs> one, one woman from Virginia, i would never met her. She was having me paint her granddaughter. Uh, when I asked her the eye color, she sent me Sherman Williams paint samples <laughs> in the mail. So I would get the exact color of her granddaughter's eyes. And it was helpful. It really was. Helpful. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's, and that's great. And then one thing I do want to say that even though we go through all these weird things with commissions, <laughs> well, ultimately it helped me teaching. It helps me in the teaching because people bring into workshops every kind of problem you can imagine uh-huh. <laughs> all at once. And, and each one is, has a separate little problem, like the squinting, the big teeth, the smiles, uh-huh. the squinting, whatever. And we have to figure it out. So it's a, it, it never ends. Yeah, that I think thing. that's true. How do you guys involve your clients? I know for me, um, I, I work with them usually over the internet on coming up with a mutually agreeable photo that we we both agree can be the foundation of the painting. And then I work up a sketch and I generally send them what's gonna be my working sketch and make sure that, you know, I get the approval at that point. And then 
Um, and then I'm sort of off to the races and I don't involve them generally in color choices and things of that sort unless um, unless I feel like I, I, I need it to go in a certain room and then sometimes I'll go to the room and just get a feel for, for that place myself. Um, you know, whether it's cool or warm or, you know, those sorts Good of things. You. Um, the other thing that I will do is sometimes um, if I feel a background is going to be a helpful thing um, and I'm, I'm sort of six of one, half a dozen the other, I'm not really sure, or it could go a lot of ways. And I've done this on social media. You probably, if you follow me, you've probably seen it where I'll just superimpose a background on a photo of my portrait and then I will um, let the client in the end decide. All of, this, all of the options I submit to them are ones that I'm good with. I would never you know, just say, well, my couch is blue, we need the background to be blue or something. Um, I, all, I, don't, I, only, it's, I sort of treat it like my toddlers or, or my kids. You know? I give them options, but all of them are acceptable to me. And, um, and so, I, I stay in touch with my clients, but I don't necessarily let them right along the way. How about how about you guys? How how have you handled you know people's involvement? Uh, well, for myself, I don't think I, I allow them to have a lot of choices other than the choice of the pose. You know, once we we agree on it together, mm -hmm. um, color wise, I I'm asking them to trust me. I recently I did uh, email a woman and say, do you hate green? Some people hate green and it, this painting was just calling for a really strong hooker's green actually for you. Mm. you know, yeah, <laughs> it needed that background. It really did. And I wanted to make sure she was going to be okay with that. And uh, she was and it, and it turned out well, but I don't typically ask questions. I, I expect them to trust me um, at, from once we agree on the, the size and the, the pose. Right, size and pose, exactly. What about you, Janet and Steve? Uh, I, I always ask them. I go through a mental thing. I, I really like to talk with them when I get a commission. I, I'm like you, I absolutely one photo to go with. It has to be, especially with the head. I can make up clothes. I can make up hairstyles. I can do a lot of changes, but I need that image that uh, feeling of the person it's got to be there it's got to be whole i like backup photos to get a feel of who they are and then i like to talk about them with their relationship with the person and blah 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 anything that will help give me the information does yeah. that make sense and uh yeah. and, and then i ask about colors and everything i do i ask them sometimes if they want to a picture or something they said okay you could send it so internet sending a picture or something but mostly it's just I'll ship it to them <laughs> they don't like it I have always said I know this might be wrong you don't have I'll do it again or you don't have to take it but mostly <laughs> I know that's really risky I yeah that's 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 maybe that's a little bit generous but that's, that's you very good <laughs> well, do do any of you guys uh, have a payment schedule, or do you just uh, wait until the end? Well, we have that as a question, actually, um, and uh, I think it's a good one. Um, my pro my general rule of thumb is um, fifty percent down, but during coronavirus, I'm asking for seventy five percent because I could use the cash to write a book. <laughs> I like it. Good for you, Rebecca. Listen, I know it's so hard. I, I've not been a real good business person, probably. I just want to want to make people happy. But but you're it to to make it like a business is is probably a proper good thing to do. And having your um, it spelled out for you to you know to to get the payments. That's a good thing. Yeah, Rebecca, I think you're way more of a business person than Janet or I. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, paying rent. I'm paying rent now, so I've had to get oh, serious. Yeah. See, um, yeah, that's the part of this whole art business thing. I just, 
do not like, um, I don't like having to deal with the business. It all, at first when I started doing commissions, I was almost embarrassed. Isn't that a weird thing to feel? Um, to say, well, this is my price. And, and I, I felt apologetic about it. Um, I did too. I did too. I'm over that now. Yeah. Um, and if they can't, there are times people will say, no, I, I, yeah, I love your work, but I, I can't afford you right now. And I'm, I'm not going to say, oh, well, I'll, I'll bring it down. No, no. You, you get to a point where you realize you can't spend, I don't want to spend my life doing commissions. I want to have the fun of my other work and um, do commissions here and there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. but you're right. The more, uh, the more we have our ducks in a row, the, the more pleasant this is going to be. Um, and I don't typically ask for uh, a deposit, although if it's someone blindly contacting me through social media, I do. Um, if I have some kind of a connection to that person, um, then I, I often don't even ask for a deposit, but I'm asking them to trust me. Oh, we were talking about making changes to the last question. Um, the commission I have on the table right now, I can't show you. I don't typically post any commissions because to me that's private property. Yeah. Um, the the two boys in this commission have COVID hair, you know, nobody's cut oh. their hair for three months and it's wild, crazy hair. You like and this? <laughs> the fa well, the father who's commissioning this said, can you give them a sort of a haircut? And I'm, I didn't say anything, but he also said, you have artistic license. Okay, you know what? I'm leaving COVID hair because I love their hair. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would. <laughs> it's a snapshot in time. That's what we're where we're at right now. So, you know, with 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 all three of you, you all work in strictly in watercolor. I do. Yeah, because that's I, a real that's a real challenge you, when, when it comes to uh, you know the ability to make a change. You know, if it's an oil painting, you know, there's a lot more leeway, a lot yeah. more latitude for yeah, you can darken something you can lighten something with watercolor it's there janet just parenthetically janet had a commission you know years ago a doctor and his wife oh, and they, no, don't and they <laughs> so she no, did we want to hear we so want to hear she, <laughs> she did the painting of the doctor and his wife and like 10 years later They're this divorced. doctor came to janet and he had a new wife oh and he wondered if Janet could replace the old wife no. with the trophy wife that he had. <laughs> no. Collage. It's time for mixed media. <laughs> yeah, there the you thing. go. <laughs> 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 anyway. Oh, I love it. I love it. That is hysterical. It is uh, so funny. We could write books, right? <laughs> we could write books on commission. It's, you know, <laughs> thinking of that, made me think of the fact that I've often suggested when people want their two siblings together in a picture, I have often suggested doing two separate yeah. or three separate I paintings do. I because it's so together. much better. You can, you can, uh, first of all, it's easier on you as an artist. If you mess exactly. one up, you haven't messed the whole thing up. Exactly. And then it's something for each of them to take um, at some point. If they, there you, you know, go. Home. So, um, I, I agree wholeheartedly, Pam. Yeah. And the hardest thing is to, to put, people together in a commission oh it is and have, the, and have the interaction too the, yeah. the, the, very, the, and the, composition let alone the composition the mary cassatt kind of a thing where there's an interaction um, with people. right yeah. right right yeah i i had to i did a um a commission recently of, of the obamas and um oh my gosh that was such a challenge because every every public picture of them they've got great big smiles and beautiful teeth and <laughs> you know everything you don't want in a classic portrait right and and she wanted them together and um i just had the hardest time finding photographs of of them i had to actually call from two different places flip one superimpose i wondered yeah. I, composition. yeah i always have that too it's just too hard too difficult and, and you didn't put them in a great big bed of flowers no, no, I did not. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. The, the yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I kind of so, like yeah. it. Okay. They're on. Um, yeah. 
there, um, there, that was a, a, I don't know, that whole portrait thing. We won't go down that path. Um, we're just going to stick to the topic here. The, um, I did want to ask though, um, like, do you guys mention about um, that when they purchase, um, like I've, I've done um, commercial commission and I, I made it a point and I would suggest that if anybody, um, that you just sort of as a rule talk about the fact that any reproduction of that painting has to come through you um, as, as the artist. Because when somebody buys your work, they don't buy the right to reproduce it. And especially if you're dealing with commercial people, like I was dealing with a local hospital here, um, I wanted to make sure that if they used my painting, that that they made those reproductions through me. And so I sold them a separate licensing agreement. And um, I only, you know, I didn't know anything about it at the time. I had to research it and, and come up with a price, but, um, it's something to think about just talking to your clients about that if they want to if they want to make a copy of your painting that you know that they should think about um, doing that through you which is a great reason for you to make sure also to um, take a really good photograph of of your painting before you send it away right um, because if if they decide that oh i wish my daughter could have this a copy of this well, then you'll be in a position to make them that copy um, if you've got the, the good photo on, you know, in your records. So I would definitely suggest that you make sure that you've got a great photo before you send it away. Sometimes that's an easy step to forget. Yeah, with, with copyright, you really, uh, you don't have a lot of recourse on that unless you register your, uh, your work with the uh, Library of Congress. You can recover damages, but people will claim that they had expenses and they, you know, if, if somebody in China or somebody starts, you know, producing whatever you've done, uh, you don't have a lot of recourse unless it's actually copyrighted, which you can do easily. You can uh, just send them a CD even uh, nowadays, you know, with all the work that you've done, if you're inclined to do that, if, you, if you're concerned about copyright. I'm not so worried about copyright, but I do think that um, it's another, um, it's another potential um, income stream for you too. I mean, just if, if they decide that they want to make copies for their kids or whatever, I just have found that it's just super easy. It's rather than like backtracking later and saying, oh, you did something wrong. If you can prevent it right up front by just saying, hey, I can make you reproductions, but um, any reproductions of this really need to come through me. Um, and, uh, and, and then, you know, once you've said it, then everybody knows, right? And it's not something you necessarily would think about um, until, you, until you deal with something commercial or maybe until you learn the hard way um, with somebody, re, you know, reproducing your work um, without uh, permission. Let's talk about pricing. Um, do you, I, I price by the, the size, I, I tried to do it by the square inch, but then I just, that just, the math of that just got too crazy and the numbers got really picky, uni precise. And, and so I just basically came up with a list of my regular sizes of, of paper, you know, quarter sheet, half sheet, full sheet, um, 16 by 20, whatever. And, and then I just made sure that as they got bigger, they got more expensive. What about you, Pam? How, how do you, like what's your philosophy about that's, that? That's very similar to what I put, I, when I send them out, when they indicate that they're really interested in the commission. Uh, mine start with standard sizes. Um, the tiniest I think I, I have in that is like an eight by 10. Yeah. Um, and uh, then it goes up from there. And then I have what I would add if there's an additional figure. And for the smaller sizes, I say, this is only suitable for one portrait. And then when it gets up to the sizes where you could have two or three, I indicate that in my little note that I send out. Um, and then I, when we do decide on something, I say, here would be your final price because you're asking for a 12 by 16 and you want two figures in, here would be your final price. So there's, I have it in writing, you know, um, even digitally. Um, I'm really bad at the piece you're just talking about, the whole, um, the image is mine kind of thing. I, 
frankly, I don't want to be involved in making copies. And I've not done commercial work like that um, for portraits. I don't, I, when it's off my hands, I, I don't want to ever see it again. Um, and I do take, I, I'm now scanning everything. Um, I've learned to scan and piece together um, my, my work on, on a little scanner. I can piece it together. And uh, I always have a good record. So I don't know. I, I have not been burned, but I just know right now I don't even want to be a person who makes copies. So I say have at it. Do whatever they want with it. Yeah. I'm we'll, a, we'll keep that quiet just between <laughs> us. Oh, it, just between the 20 people that are here, right? Yeah. Three of us here. Well, I forget what your question was. Oh, it was, do, yeah, that's very much similar to what you've done. And then I have the option, I say, if you want something custom size or much larger than I've suggested, then we'll need to talk. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would custom price it, depending mm -hmm. on how complicated. Like it. you could you could have a twenty by twenty four say or twelve by sixteen inside a mat and mat it and, and whether you're going to frame it or not, mostly I don't want anything to do with that. Me neither. I might frame a twenty by twenty four, meaning the inside's twelve by sixteen. Period. That's all I. Uh, otherwise, it's too hard to ship it for right. one. Right. And uh, all that stuff. So I don't want to get into the business of framing, or the I, expense of it. I don't I agree. That's not fun. That's not the fun part of it for me. And so when I deliver a painting, when I ship a painting, I, I just ordered a pack of cheap mats that are the standard sizes. And so I quickly put it together in a, in a cellophane bag, um, just taped into that cheap mat, and they can get it custom framed then. Or mm -hmm. when yeah, they get it. That's, I, I send it, I, I ship them um, unframed. But if I have local clients um, and they want help with framing, what I do is I meet them at the frame shop. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet, Rebecca. Well, oh you know, gosh. generally the people that are hiring me are friends, right? I mean, like a lot, I, 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 do, um, I do have a really wonderful friend base that is very supportive of, of what I do. And so, for that reason, that's, you know, a step that I will take to help people. But I don't pay the frame for, for the framing. No. And I put it all in their, um, in their name and then I just let them pick it up. Um, well, that's nice. They probably feel more secure if you do that with them. No. It has helped. It has, it has helped. The, and, and, you know, it builds goodwill because okay. I have found that the people that um, are, are the people that commission me they become like repeat customers. Like yeah. I, they are people who buy from me multiple times sometimes. And so, you know, I try to offer um, special consideration for my commissions, uh, for my commission people. And I, I just, I do that for, for most of my clients actually, you know, people buy a, a regular painting from me. I give them a 10% discount going forward on anything they buy from me. And I also, I also offer trade-ins um i do i do i offer trade-ins and and the with, way with the new wife yeah <laughs> no not for portraits not for portraits but for not and not for commissions you know not for that but for um like regular paintings when people buy from me i offer trade-ins such that you know if they move or if they redecorate um if they want to buy a painting of equal or greater value yeah. i'll just I'll just keep that as an assurance. And that has helped me make sales. I have to say, I have a couple of clients who- um, Whatever works for- yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm shameless about- The kindness, you know, the kindness too, with it because you're well, personally- There's that and building relationship too. You know, it's, it's um, for me, that's really why I, I, one of the things I love about selling my work is the relationships that I- mm -hmm gain with people. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. When somebody connects with your work strong enough right. to part with a dollar, mm -hmm. there's a bond that you share. Right. And it's, to me, it's so encouraging and so valued. And I feel like Sally Field at the Oscars every time somebody buys a <laughs> painting. Oh, you like me. You really like me. <laughs> you really like me. I understand. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, yeah, so I really like to try to make them feel special in my life because they are. Um, right. 
do you guys use trademarks or um, anything like that when you put your work out on social media? I don't. No. I don't. No. I don't. I don't. I, I have, but it's so much trouble. It's um, trouble, and I don't like the way it looks. I think it detracts. I figure, you know, have at it if you're going to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not at that point. Yeah. yeah I don't do that. Another question um, that um, have we produced, produced anonymous portrait gifts, sometimes posthumous, um, and do you approach the painting any differently since it's a surprise? Yes, I do. I, um, I, I never share, I mean, I never share a, a finished commission. I do share finished commissions once they're gifted. You know, once everybody has, um, you know, all, all element of surprise is over, then I will share that. Um, and as far as painting um, someone posthumously, then you really have to make sure you have a great photo, right? Because there's no new photos that can be obtained. What about you guys? Have you, um, well, I, to, to, you know, painting portraits is pressure enough. And then to paint someone who is no longer with us, that, that is like the ultimate, because you can't ask for another photo, obviously. And there's some, there's a real emotional connection to the person. I just finished painting, um, a couple of commissions for a grandmother, of her deceased granddaughter, who was only four. And I'll tell you, the one photo was of this little granddaughter sleeping. And I cried the entire time. I thought, I just have to get this done. I cannot deal with this, uh, this painting. I, I did it in one day because I just couldn't stand working on it. it. So there's an emotional kind of a thing, a connection too, when you know um, how, emotional it is for the person who's going to be receiving this and and I was also thinking as I was painting how could you live with this in your house every day I would not want to live with this every day um, there's just so much pressure you put on yourself as a portrait artist anyway and that just adds that just multiplies it times a thousand um, yeah I think that can be really true I I have painted a lot of pet portraits of of pets who've passed away and um and you know, invariably they're met with tears, which is like, as an artist, as an artist, that's like the best possible oh, reaction. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. When somebody cries over your work, I mean, like you've scored, you have yep. nailed something. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh, it can be so like you know that it's going to be so heart wrenching for the recipient, right? Um, it's it's very emotional. This painting this. It really can be. You know, when, when you're talking about, uh, you know, commissioning uh, and it's a, more of a commercial type of thing, uh, I think what you need to also be sure you understand is who has the final decision on accepting your painting. You know, I've, I've run into that where you're dealing with somebody, but they're not really the one that decides whether or not they accept the, the commission. I don't know, with portraits, that may be a little less likely to happen, but I've had that happen, uh, you know, where you all of a sudden it's like, well, I've got to give this to a committee. I've had it happen with the Florida Senate where, where I had some commissions and they said, well, we've got to wait until the Senate comes back into uh, session before we can pay you. And then they, then they actually, they impeached somebody, <laughs> some judge. And so they had a special <laughs> session and they paid me. But Oh. You got to be a little leery of some of that. Well, stuff. this is uh, the portrait <laughs> commissions are a little different. Uh -huh. Thank goodness. Oh, that's crazy. That is just crazy. That's all the more reason to get a good deposit up front. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Rebecca. You're very right. <laughs> well, I think that was through a gallery, so it, you know, I didn't really have the. Uh, you know, the the emotional piece that happens when you show reveal a portrait to someone for the first time. That, I don't know, Janet and yes. Rebecca, if you feel yourself holding your breath, oh, you know, just waiting yeah. for that reaction. And some people are difficult to read and you're not even sure, okay, did this hit the mark? You know, they're not crying. They're not, you know, uh, it's, it, you go through the ringer. You really do um, because you have invested yourself emotionally mm -hmm. um, and you really want to make sure that you've hit the mark for this person. Um, Absolutely. I can remember um, my, 
I, I sent a, I sent a painting out um, to a friend and I didn't hear back for a few days. And this is like somebody who I would have expected to hear back from pretty quickly. And I thought, I thought, oh my God, this is, this is not good that she doesn't know what to say to me. I was like coming up with all of these reasons why she wasn't contacting me and um, come to find out she was fine. She was fine with it and she liked it. But one thing she did say, and I thought this was so funny. She said, um, well, couldn't you have made her slimmer? And, um, <laughs> and you know, like you paint what you see, right? I mean, that's what, that's what we do. And, and no, you know, she, she, I think it was a joke in the end. It was a joke in the end, but I mean, like it is kind of one of those risky feeling things when you send that image, that final image, a, a photo of it, you're like, you're crossing your fingers, your eyes, your toes, and just hoping for um, some something that that indicates that they just love it. Um, because you're right, you do. You put your heart and soul into it, and um, right. and it's for the approval of others, which is what makes commissions tough. Because right. I like to paint for me. I yeah. I like yeah. to answer to my own. Um, sense of you know what is what's going to make this better when is it done you know and when i think you know when when you step into the world of commissions i think that's one thing you just have to be ready for that all of a sudden you're saying i'm going to try to please you in exactly. some way and so defining how you're what you're willing to do and how you're you know how you're going to charge for that and um Defining your boundaries, I think, becomes an issue. I think that's a lot of what we've been talking about here, right? Do you guys have any like final words of wisdom? We're kind of up against the end of the hour here. Do you have any? Um, I wanted to say one thing, Rebecca. I, I I feel like doing portraits, even though uh, commissions, is is not my favorite thing in the world. Um, I do feel part of history when I do it because I realize this. Portraiture, commissioned portraiture is such a piece of art history. And I, I think of people like John Sargent who, yeah, who said uh, a portrait's a painting where something's wrong with the mouth. So, yeah. you know, you know, it's well, been time honored, you know, you know, these are the struggles that, that can, portrait artists have gone through throughout history. And I like to be part of that stream. So there are many, many positive things about it, um, but I can say, the biggest thing for me was getting my ducks in a row and having that little blurb that I send out to people and real and having a plan and a strategy and getting over the, oh, okay, maybe I could do that. You know, I, I had to take that piece away. And that's, that's been the biggest game changer for me. And, and for me, it's uh, the reward of, like you say, pleasing, emotionally contributing to someone's happiness. That, that portrait is, uh, I've, I've been lucky enough to be teaching instead, which I love much better. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. And get moving away from the portraits. But now with the, with the COVID, I don't know what's going to happen with her. I'll go back. I always felt, well, I have that. I can go back when I get too old to teach. <laughs> go back to portraits. I can never give them up. Because I always figured I could go spend a, you know, a day in the corner in Paris and do people's portraits, right? <laughs> I love that. I love meeting life. So it was how I learned. You know, that, that, that's so I mean. true with, with <laughs> Janet. For the, the rest of the people, you know, that are listening, you know, we're talking about the commercial aspect of it. But the, the painting part of it, you know, when Janet was talking about doing 60 commission or 60 paintings for two bucks or something like that. Brush miles, the more you paint, the better your paintings are gonna be. And that ultimately, that's the thing that's gonna make you happier uh, and, and probably also translate into better commissions. And you know, Steve, relating to what you just said, I was thinking about the fact that my commissions originally were so much tighter than mm -hmm. uh, my other work because I didn't take a risk when I knew it was for someone else. And I'm finding that as I paint more and as I gain more confidence, my, my portrait work, my commission portrait work 
now is starting to reflect more the style that I'm more known for. I figure if they commissioned me, they must have liked they yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. I know it's hard to get over because you want to please them and you're trying to read what the, is important to them. Every detail of those right. eyes, everything has to be perfect for them. Yeah. I do like the idea of um, the, the history part that you brought in, Pam, because I do think that invariably these commission pieces that, that I've been involved in will become heirlooms of a sort. You know, they'll be the pieces that probably get passed on to family members and um, have a special place in people's lives. And, and that's a wonderful thing to feel as if you've got some sort of legacy that you're leaving behind, right? Um, that your art's gonna have meaning and leave a, a happy trail. So I think if you're out there and you're thinking about um, doing commissions, I would, I would definitely um, not dissuade you from doing that, but just maybe encourage you to um, realize that you're taking a step into the business end of, of just painting. And as such, people are going to be looking to you to define the limits and to define the parameters of the relationship that you're entering into. So it's, it behooves you, I think, to, um, to, to take a moment and say, what's it worth to me to paint this painting if in this size and in that size and, and get a list together so that when and where somebody approaches you, you can appear somewhat professional, you know, and, and, and take the discomfort out of it, take any sense of negotiation out of it. Um, and just say, you know, this is the way it is and love to do it for you. And, and um, for me, that just sort of makes everything comfortable because then um, I'm not being asked to do any special favors necessarily. Um, and hopefully it can be helpful to those of you who are out there. This has been a great discussion. I have enjoyed it tremendously. I really have. And I hope that my, um, my internet issues didn't um, undermine the recording, but look for it on YouTube. You can find um, this posted on my YouTube channel, which will be Rebecca Z Artist on YouTube. Um, and feel free to, to look for me on social media as Rebecca Z Artist on Facebook and Instagram. Um, Pam, what, what are your handles on uh, Facebook and Instagram? If you can find me by just looking for Pam Wanger, but uh, P Wanger 32 is what I'm on Instagram, but you can find me under Pam Wanger and Facebook. And that's largely where I'm, and pamwanger.com uh, is my website. So yeah. you can find uh, me there. I just wanted to say thank you, Rebecca, for doing this. Uh, it was great to see old friends and meet some new ones that um, I will be hopefully connecting with in the future. So. Thank you. I hope so. I hope it gives you a new audience for your for your work and for your workshops. Janet, can, where can people find you and get in touch with with you and Steve? Watercolors by Rogers dot com, and it's R O G E R S. <laughs> right, the correct com. way. The correct way. But <laughs> and we're just Janet Rogers. See if you can Google us, and uh, we'll be on Facebook. We've got I've got four DVDs published, Steve has two. Um, we're going to try to get online and hopefully we'll be, we'll be seeing zooming, you at the maybe. workshop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I miss, I love the on hands-on workshops and hopefully we can, we can do that. Yeah, actually on Facebook, we've both posted uh, just recently a bunch of uh, challenges. So if you went to either of our uh, Facebook. Facebook pages, you'd see all that. Anyway. Great. Great. That's Thank nice to hear. Right. Yeah. Um, that's nice to hear. And um, and God willing, we'll we'll have to wait and see what the fall holds. But um, Janet Thanks. is is currently on schedule to to come to Myrtle Beach to teach in person. We're we're having to sort of reevaluate that as we go, as everyone can understand in this current environment. But certainly um, stay tuned and you could sign up for my newsletter for, for any um, capacity to, uh, to get the first, first uh, notifications about all of that. Um, I look forward to seeing all of you um, whenever that opportunity arises. 
Janet and Steve, be well, stay healthy down there in Florida. Pam, it's been a pleasure to see you again. Thank you. And you all of you. In. Yeah. Thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> all, of you, all of you, thank you for joining us. It's been a wonderful discussion and I appreciate all of you. Thanks for making me get out of my pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We're all in this together, right? <laughs> yeah, we're all in this together. Thank you. Okay, lots of love, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.